What's up, everybody? I'm Ernest Baker, Editor-in-Chief for Front Office Sports. Welcome to another episode of the My Other Passion Podcast. Appreciate everybody who's been tuning in so far. Today, we have another great guest, Mr. Vernon Davis. You might know him from his days in the NFL. He won a Super Bowl with Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos back in 2016. And he's been doing a lot of stuff ever since he retired from the league. I don't even know if you can really say the guy retired because now he's acting, he's in movies, he's working with Morgan Freeman and Bruce Willis and Luke Wilson. He just told me he's like rapping and trying to drop an album. His investment game is crazy. He started off owning a bunch of Jamba Juices and then went on to invest in a bunch of companies, real estate flips. He's exactly what this podcast is about. Had a real pleasure speaking with him. You know, great guy. A lot of stuff that we can learn from him. And you know, that's how we try to come every week. So first, we got to get into a quick message from our partners at NetSuite. And we'll be right back with Vernon. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. That's true when your business is growing fast. And that's even more true when there's a lot of uncertainty like there is in the market right now. Inflation is running rampant. Supply chains are clogged. The labor market is tight. What does that mean for your margins? Well, not every business is in the dark. Over 31,000 businesses know everything about their numbers because they use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. NetSuite gives you all the visibility you need. You have control over your financials, planning, budgeting, of course, inventory. You can manage risks. You can get reliable forecasts. You can improve your margins. Everything you need all in one place. They say in 2022, profit is the new growth. You'll see that the minute you get NetSuite. It'll help you identify rising costs, automate your manual business processes, see where to save money. NetSuite is how you really get to know your numbers, really get to know your business. You need to find out how NetSuite can be the source of truth for your entire company. So go ahead right now, go to netsuite.com slash my other passion. There's a one of a kind flexible financing program if you need it. NetSuite.com slash my other passion. Tell them I sent you and take your business to the next level. Vernon Davis, welcome to the My Other Passion podcast. How you doing today, brother? Good. Doing really well. Thanks. All right. I see you're in the car, on the move. Where are you at? You know, I'm driving. I'm about to go to this um, this this production set that we have going on. It's, uh, it's a sitcom that we're developing. It's a pilot, shooting a pilot for. So I'm about to go to that and try to get it done for the day. I feel you, man. Every day counts. Are you out in California? No, I'm actually in Washington, D.C. Okay. Well, I know that's where you're from. So you still you still hold it down. You still live there or you're there often. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here often. I after I retired with the Washington with well, the Washington Commanders. Now, I decided to stay here because my kids are going to school and um, I pretty much made this my home. Yeah, what was it like? What was it like growing up out there? Like, you know, I think that must have been what nine. You know, you're a '90s kid, maybe some early 2000s before you got to the league and all that stuff. Like, what was what was DC like? How does what what imprint did DC leave on you as a person? Uh, well, DC. Well, yeah, growing up in Washington DC, I was always, you know, I always took pride in the city that I was from, and it was nothing. It was to, it's totally different now than it was back in the day. Um, but, you know, it's better. It's for the better. Uh, the community is thriving. Uh, there's a lot happening here in Washington, D.C. But, yeah, I, it's just D.C. Is, is a place that I feel like everyone needs to to visit and see because a lot of people don't go here. I asked a lot of my teammates when I was playing ball, have they ever been to D.C.? And the first thing they say is no, they've never been. But it's one of those places that a lot of people don't don't get a chance to see, but they, they need to visit. And I feel like when they visit, they'll fall in love. Yeah, I used to spend a a solid amount of time down there. I'm out in, well, I live in LA. I'm actually recording this from New York right now out here on some business. But when I was living in New York for like 10 years, I'd go down to DC every other weekend, be on 8th Street, you know, all that stuff. Um, Great city. Growing up, I always thought that it was only the government stuff. (laughs) You know, like I remember thinking Vegas was only the strip and DC was only the mall. And um, then getting out there and realizing all the culture that you all have as a city. So you went to school not too far from there, Maryland? Yep, U- University of Maryland. Went to Maryland, uh, wanted to stay close to home, stay close to the family. And I um, always felt like 
by me going to Maryland and getting drafted, going to the next level, I'll go somewhere to another city and then I'll be able to, to come back here again. And it came into fruition. After I left Denver, I was able to come back in and play for, play for my hometown team. What was it like, you know, you stay close to home, you go to Maryland, then your first round draft pick, number six pick overall. Uh, what did, what did that mean to you? I, I, I always ask this when I'm on with athletes, but I really think it's such a unique opportunity. You know, also I got kids, so I know how it goes. If you got, if yeah. you got to check back, um, yes. <laughs> my wouldn't let me record a podcast if they were in the same room. So props to you, but how was it to, to check that box and really, you know, you grow up, you play sports and then, a dream is realized. What was that like for you? How'd your family react? You know, how'd you feel just as a, as a man pursuing your dreams? I remember, you know, I remember being drafted, standing on that stage at Radio City Music Hall. And you, I'm not sure you're familiar with Radio City Music Hall. My entire family was with me. And all I could think about was back in the day, just playing on the playground and just, just having that, that passion and desire to make it as a professional athlete. And you have those memories as you're, as you're standing there. And then I get called by the San Francisco 49ers. It's the first, it's the sixth pick in the first round. And at that moment, that instance, my whole entire life changed for the better. It was like a dream come true. It was all surreal for me. And, you know, I'll never forget that moment. It was a great moment in my life. And then to win a Super Bowl. A lot of people get to realize that dream, but they might be out the league in a couple years. They might not ever get to the mountaintop. But what was it like to win a Super Bowl? She winning a Super Bowl is even I mean, that could that was amazing. That was another highlight in my life because you know, I went so long. It took me ten years to be able to win a Super Bowl. I mean, some teams, some guys make it to see it, but they may not win. But then you have guys who played 13, 14 years and never even go to the Super Bowl. So, you know, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to make it that far because I know that it could have been the other way. So, you know, I'm going to cherish that ring. I'm going to cherish, you know, the, the 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 trophy and just accept it, accept it for what it is and just continue to be grateful. Well, you played with and won that Super Bowl with the Denver Broncos and, you know, one of the very greatest, some people might argue the greatest, you know, he's in that conversation. It's Tom Brady, it's Peyton Manning, it's maybe a handful of other guys you can mention. Um, <laughs> you know, anything special about playing with uh, a QB of that that caliber, anything that you kind of learn from him maybe that you take through the rest of your life or just something you admired from from being on a team and catching some passes from like a prolific athlete? Yeah, the thing that I admire about playing with a, a quarterback like Peyton Manning, those guys, they, they're they like, they're calling the shots. You know, you can, I remember being in the locker room and, well, not the locker room, but the, the meeting. We'd have like a, an offensive, offensive meeting. And Peyton Manning would take control. You would have probably thought he was the offensive coordinator, you know, because he would just take control. He would call the shots. And he was just up there. I mean, he was orchestrating the entire meeting. I'm like, wow, this is incredible. <laughs> like, it was my first time seeing a quarterback take over like that. I mean, he knew the playbook inside out. He could tell guys where to line up, what, what he expected out of them. He was just – it was just amazing seeing that. And from that day, I had a total – like, my, my respect level for Peyton Manning was even – bigger than it was before. I mean, I all, I've always respected him. I mean, he's a, he's a legend. He's legendary. Uh, a lot of everybody knows that. And, um, but just seeing that firsthand was just like, really, I was like, wow, this, this is what is, this is what a premier legendary hall of fame quarterback is about. So what do you think, whether it's just, Pay Manny as a quarterback and the stature that he has or being on a Super Bowl winning team, having years where you didn't win a Super Bowl, what's like the distinguishing factor when you can look back at Super Bowl 50 and say, okay, here's what was different about all my other years in the NFL. Is it, is it luck? Is it 
no, we were, we had a certain mission that we stuck to. I mean, I love getting inside like the head of someone who actually experienced th these things. Cause you know, I'm, I've watched every Super Bowl since I was a kid. And uh, at the end of that game, I'm always like, what's it, what's going on with these guys? What are they thinking? And how did they get here? I think and not, you, what, so, and not what ESPN is saying, by the way, <laughs> I want to no. hear from, from you. So it's a combination of a, of, of, a, of a few things. Like, first of all, you have to have everybody on, everyone on defense has to play the same exact way. Everybody on offense has to play the same exact way, meaning the level and the tempo and the urgency, the, the mindset, like the mission, everything has to be the same. When you have that both offensively and defensively and not, not, I can't forget to mention special teams as well, but when you have that, you're going to win games and you're probably going to win every game that you play. Um, it's just that that was that's that's what we had, and you could see it from the time I walked into that locker room. I knew it was something special and unique about that team because they were all wanted. Even in the locker room, they were talking about winning the Super Bowl. Like every every step I took, somebody was sitting there and they were talking about winning the Super Bowl. Oh, we got this. It was so positive, motivating. Just just the environment, the culture, everything was just in sync. They all wanted it. They all had the same mindset. And when you had when you create that in that kind of environment, you're going to win. You're going to win games. You're going to, you're going to possibly win the Super Bowl as well. So, and, and that's why we're able to come out victorious and come on with the trophy. Do you keep up with a guy like Payton or some of the other guys on the team? Like what's that bond? Like once you go to another team, once you retire, cause I see him, he's in every other commercial. He's got his Manning cast. Um, and I, you know, you call them up sometimes or how does that relationship happen after you all kind of go your separate ways from a, a football standpoint? Yeah, I think some people, the most part, I mean, you have guys, it's like anything else. You have your favorite guys, you have your group, the, the guys that you hang out with. Right. And most likely you're probably going to keep in contact with them throughout the course of your life, throughout the rest of your life. And. And that's how it works. And then sometimes you have guys who you, you respect, like for me, Peyton. Peyton can text me anytime. I can text him. Like he actually texted me about a week ago saying, I appreciate it. He wanted he wanted to thank me for the kind words that I said about him in an interview. Rob Ronkowski and I had, we hosted a show for USA Today High School Sports Awards. And one of my interviews, I talked about Peyton. Peyton, I talked about how benevolent he is as a person, not just not just skillful, at the quarterback position, but he was an even better person. And that's, and that's what, that's what I felt kind of like what we what we're talking about now, what I'm, what I'm sharing with you. That's the relationship we have. That's the, when you ever, I mean, that's the respect we have for each other. And, and my line's always open. And his line's always open. Yeah. It's just, just what it is. You know, you, you, you have people that you, you can always reach out to whenever you feel and you create that. Awesome, man. Love, love to hear that. It was a lot of fun watching you all. I still remember the Super Bowl party I was at. They had some banging uh, nachos <laughs> and some great drinks. And then, um, you know, you all really brought it to the to the Panthers that year. Cam, it was cool to see Cam get there. But, you know, the defense was just on a different level. You got paid in. It was meant to be. But yeah. with all of that said, you know, the reason – that I wanted to have you on this podcast, as you know, it's called My Other Passion. And we don't go too hard on let's just talk about your hobbies and your passions. I want to know everything. I want to hear about the NFL days. I want to hear about what makes you you. But you are a perfect candidate in the sense that we do like to talk about how athletes and executives and celebs are multifaceted people. You know, you might know them for one thing and there's something else that they're really passionate about or they just are capable of doing a bunch of different things. You're acting right now. But before we get into that, I know you love Curly. <laughs> and I think Curly has this sort of like, in America, it's this novelty, it's this curiosity when the Winter Olympics come around. Um, and I've honestly never really seen much beyond it. Like, oh, curling's on, it's two in the morning, they're playing over in whatever country. This is kind of interesting, but like, What's the real culture behind curling? I've never heard anybody say, yo, I love curling. And meanwhile, you're an honorary captain of the men's Olympic team. Like, what? what's the real deal with curling? 
Well, first and foremost, it's not an African American sport, and we all know that. We, know. but the thing is, we're trying to we're trying to diversify this sport. We want more African American African Americans to, to to take on this sport because it's uh it's really unique. It's something like it's very relaxing. It's a, it's a sport that you can play for the rest of your life if you choose to. But we want more we want more ethnicities. We want we want this sport to be cultured. You know what I mean? So that's that's my that's my that's my intent. That's my approach to to bring more awareness to the sport so that everyone can can know about it and 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 pursue it because I think it's unique. It's it's very I feel like everyone should be become familiar with this with the game of curling. But what is like what is the thing about it? I've I've only or people that I've been around, we watch it and it's like a curiosity. Whereas, you know, football, adrenaline, throw it, touchdown, sacks. Like, what is the what is the thing about curling that makes it fun, that makes it competitive, like, you know, that makes it popular with, you know, at least some segment of the population? So the goal, the goal is to go from one point to another and get there consistently, right? And and accurate. You want to be very accurate when when hitting your target, just like golf. Like when you hit the ball in golf, you want to get it as close to the hole as possible. So, and it's like a joy you get when you accomplish that, right? It's the same thing with curling. That's what that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it competitive. And it's but it's very strategic. The game is more defensive than it is offensive. So, in, in another sport you can think of is shuffleboard. Shuffleboard, similar to shuffleboard, like it's a lot of guys play it now. When I was in the locker room, when I was playing with the Washington football team, I mean, you had all, I mean, everyone would go play shuffleboard, right? Now, what if we had curling? What if we had like a, a space for curling? I feel like everyone would be in there if they had access to it, if they knew about it. So it's just like that. It's very rewarding, very uh, competitive, and it's a game that everyone could play. You are doing so many things, and you talk about curling in the sense of wanting to diversify that sport. But you're investing in real estate, you're acting, you are all over the place. And like, what exactly is your mindset? <clears throat> well, I've always been passionate about the things that I was attracted to, right? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid to pursue different things. And I do what I love and I do what I feel. Like, I'm not, I'm not just doing curling just to bring, just to, to say that I'm doing it. I'm not doing, I'm not acting just to just to to say that I want to be famous or, or something, you know what I mean? I'm doing it. I don't really care what happens. Of course, I want to be successful with it. And of course, I want to accomplish a great deal of success with it. But if I'm doing it, that means I'm, I love it or I'm passionate about it. You know, I, I recently started rapping. I'm, I'm launching my, my single comes drops uh, August 23rd on, on all platforms like Spotify, <laughs> iTunes. So I started rapping about a year and a half ago, but I was writing poetry since I was playing ball. So after I got done playing football and I retired, I said, oh, I'm curious to see what it's like to go in the studio and, and see what that, that does. I want to know what my voice sounds like. So when I did that, I was like, wow, I love it. So now, you know, I'm, I'm like 20 songs deep about to, you know, bring out my first single. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. What's the song called? Uh, it's called Smile For Me. You, you want to drop a couple bars? How, how does the first verse start? So the first verse, it's like, um, pull up, take you for a ride. You can open up the door. You can stay in for a while. Play, play, play your favorite song while I'm making you smile. I'm steady holding on your hand while you enjoying the ride. All right. Well, we got to see we got to see the rest in a couple of weeks on Spotify and Apple. And maybe people can listen to this podcast and then go go turn up your track. <laughs> Turn up, I'm thing. telling you. It's a journey, okay. man. It's like, look, I'm telling you, like, this song is so cool, bro. When you hear it, you hear the beat, you can be like, wow, it's kind of like a little West Coast vibe. <clears throat> and <clears throat> the great thing, the thing about that I love about this, about this song that I wrote, it's like I'm taking you on a journey. You know how you meet a girl for the first time, and then, you, you know, you meet her, then maybe two, three weeks later, y'all on FaceTime. Well, y'all been on FaceTime, but you're on FaceTime yeah, say maybe two, three, three weeks later, you're on FaceTime, you're talking to her, hey, what you doing today? You know, you're trying to go get something to eat, go to the park, and you pull up, you take that journey, y'all hold a hand, she's smiling, y'all been together for a little while, and at the end, y'all become intimate. 
you know, it's just a journey, a progression of like <clears throat> life and a relationship and how it starts and how it how it progresses. And then all of a sudden this happens, you know, of course. So you're clearly really passionate about music. And what who do you listen to? Like who inspires you the most? I like J. Cole. I mean, he's my favorite. He's my all time favorite. I like Wale. I like you think J. Cole is like I, the I like goat. Drake. Like you think J. Cole is like the best rapper of all time type. I think J. Cole is, I think he's cool. I think he's dope. I, I wouldn't say he's the best rapper of all time. Well, you know what? You good. said he's, you said he's your all time favorite. I'm like, oh, is J. He Cole is my, top, top? <laughs> no, he's my all time favorite, but I, I'm not, I can't say he's like, I can't say he's, the, he's up. He's my all time favorite, but a lot of people are not going to say he's the GOAT. They're not going to say it's he's the, the difference GOAT. between greatest and favorite. You right. I mean? Exactly. So, exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. There we go. Understood. So really passionate about music. Uh, but I just saw a tweet the other day and it was funny because like completely unrelated to the fact that me and you were about to talk. Somebody was like, yo, Vernon Davis is getting it in right now. I just seen two movies that he was in like back to back. I don't know if they were expecting that. And, you know, in all honesty, I don't think I was. I don't know how many other people were. Um, I have read and seen that you've been an artist for a long time and you've always had an interest in the arts. Um, but now you are post NFL, you get an opportunity to explore this. You've acted with Morgan Freeman, Bruce Willis, Luke Wilson. What is Hollywood like? What's your experience like? You ever get starstruck or, you know, or you just like, what is that set life? actually like because we all you know i think everybody loves and glamorizes hollywood but now you're out there you're on set i got a boy who uh, a friend of mine who was in ballers and like a couple other shows and he's you know he's like hey they don't pay you to act they pay you to wait and <laughs> just certain like realities of what it's like to be an actor but what is what is your experience like yeah so we call it we call it when you when you're acting we call it hurry up and wait so you get there like 8 a.m. You don't go until like 11 p. 11 a.m. You know what I mean? So you have to have a great deal of patience when it comes to this craft. You have to you have to really be patient and understand the process of what this really is. You know what I mean? And and once you if you got if you have that you can do this all day every day. You can do it for the rest of your life. And another thing is, I mean this this industry can be whatever. It's, it reminds me of the game of football because in football you have your you have guys who are who are not team guys. They're not the team. They're not the team kind of guy. You know what I mean? I used to be one of those guys. I wasn't always the team guy. I had to learn and develop and become that leader that the team brought me in to be. So, it, and then you have guys who are just like stand up dudes who, who stood the test of time and who understands what it likes, what is, what it's like to put people first. Right. So it's just like, I, that's what you get in the, in this industry. Like you're on set. It can be, I mean, one guy's like a guy could be like a prima donna, and then the other the other guy can be just as nice as anyone you've ever met in your life. So it's it's different. You get different get different flavors when you're on set. Is there one thing that you know, being a Super Bowl champion, you know, NFL player, that you can take with you onto set or into Hollywood? Yeah, I think the thing that you can take with you on set is what you learn throughout throughout your career. Like for I'll give you an example. So for me, I learned to be prepared before I even get to the game, before game day even arrives. I'm prepared. I've caught thousands of balls with footballs. I've caught thousands of footballs and I've ran I've ran every route numerous times. Uh, I know how I'm gonna do this and do that. It's just I'm prepared. I'm super prepared. And just like when it comes to a screenplay, I know my lines inside and out. I I've I've done it. I've rehearsed. I'm prepared. Like I've I've broken down the script. I know my objective. I got my I have my backstory. I've I've paraphrased. I've, I have my different emotions attached to every line. You know what I mean? But of course, when those cameras start rolling. Everything that you prepared and planned for is not going to happen the same. But what you have is you develop the foundation, the, the foundation you create from doing all that work. If you do the work, when it's time to get in front of the camera, everything that's supposed to come out of you, that that, that you built 
in this character is going to come out. And that's what I love about it. Like every every movie that I do, like I just got back from doing a movie called Tonic. I play an award-winning jazz pianist, right? And then the other movie I play in, uh, it's called Senior Year. I play a basketball coach. So there's so many things that you have to do as a coach when you just, you can't just stand on the sideline. What is a coach actually doing when he's standing on the sideline? He's walking back and forth. He's holding his face. He's kind of like looking at the play. He's walking to his, his other players, putting his hand on his shoulder. So all those things you have to put into that character. I didn't rehearse that. But I when, when you get on set, those cameras start rolling. It's like game day. It's like it comes out of you naturally because of everything that you built in this character. So you automatically, automatically going to process the environment. Once you see the environment, like this is the environment. What does a coach do? Okay, what does a jazz pianist do based on my research? So you just start doing all kinds of things. So how far you think you're how far you think you're going to take it with this? Of course, you're not going to get into it and say, "Oh, I think, you know, I'm going to be mediocre." I'm sure you have great ambitions, but like, you know, what what do you see as success? Are you trying to like win the Oscar or are you like, you know, I heard you say you want to model your career after The Rock, which what what ultimately do you want to well, accomplish being well when i say rock i don't want to be an action star i want to be i want to be like an actor i want to be i'm doing like right now i've done i've played so many different roles i play a serial killer i play a basketball coach i play a jazz pianist i play a, a character who's telekinetic like i'm playing so many different roles you know rock is a great he's great at what he does you know he does a lot of action action and if i have to you just mean the sense that people don't think of him even really as a wrestler anymore. Right. You know, he's an actor right, first. Right, right. You know, I'm not a, I don't want to be an action. I'm not an action star. I'm a, I'm very creative. I'm very like in, in tune with my emotions. Like it's a lot to play a serial killer. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you have to be very believable to play that role. So when people watch this movie that I did, that I did with Morgan Freeman, they're not going to see me. They're not going to, it's, it's nowhere close to who I am. Like that character like I had anxiety after I finished that movie. Like I had to, I had to get a therapist because it felt so good to be that character. I kind of lost control of who I really was. Like I know you probably heard something like that before, yeah. but I went so deep. Like I learned Zulu. I learned uh, the South African dialect. You know what I mean? So, well, that's famously, um, you know, Heath Ledger's death is always tied to the fact that. He was really into that role as a Joker. Even Michael K. Williams, rest in peace, said being on The Wire or being on Lovecraft, different shows that he did, different roles that he had, like produced real trauma or brought up real trauma from his yeah. past. Yeah. And you look, I, I use my past in a lot of my work. You have to. You have to relate relate your, your real life circumstances to to whatever character it is that you're playing. Like you don't really, it's hard to understand what that really means or what what's that like until you actually become consistent at at this stuff. Like like I had to get to this point. Like I worked, I've been working my working my tail off to become really good at this craft. I mean, I do it because I love it. I'm I'm an artist. I've always been an artist. You know, football player second. I love the game. I love the game, the platform that the game has given me. But I've never really, I've always been an artist first. It it just took football to be over for me to be able to tap into all these different things that I'm doing. Gave you that platform, yeah. gave you some security. What is someone like Morgan Freeman, Bruce Willis, like true legends when it comes true, true movie stars. Do you get some game from them on set or are they closed off no. or, you know, you're new, you're new. So you got to tell me what is Morgan Freeman or Bruce Willis? Dude, to Morgan Martin Freeman Davis? treated me like we've known each other for years, but he was also there for me. Like there was certain, there was a, a couple, there was a scene, two scenes that we did together. Right. And I had my choices that I made, but he came and he said, try this. So he gave me, he's the kind of like a coach and a co-star. You know what I mean? He's, 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 he's out there as an actor and a coach. So I, you know, I applaud him. I respect him for that because he didn't have to do that. I mean, he's very playful, um, great energy. But the one thing that I recognize out of him that that I see in myself is his is his is his passion and dedication to to the craft. You know what I mean? I mean, this guy's 85 years old. He was the first person on set and the last one to leave, ha as he was having a debate with the director. Really? Yeah, it was impressive. It was crazy. I've never seen anything like it. And then, look, normally when you get a big star like Morgan Freeman, after he say his lines. 
they'll normally have a double come in, right? The double comes in when the other person is saying, other characters is saying his line, this line. So I'm like, more, I'm looking at Morgan. I'm like, that ah, he's still here. They didn't bring the double in for him. You know yeah. what I mean? Because he said his lines. Already. So what did he? So what did he? If you have something specific, what did he say that you're like, yo, Morgan Freeman told me this, and I'm trying to be a successful actor. This is the best news I could have got from such a seasoned veteran. He said, always be subtle. He said, just be subtle. You know how to do just subtle, just just little things. It's the little less is more. You know what I mean? Just just subtle. Just 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 like, like he gave, you know. I got it. That's what you realize with real acting, you know? It's like, it's not, yo, John, nah, nah, nah. I hate that you came here. You have to, you have to really get into that zone and do it like you would do it in real life. And I think the best acting doesn't look like acting. It looks like something that you see and you say, oh, I could do that. What is he doing? But it's in the eyes. It's in, in the, the eyes. eyebrows. It's in your your body language, all of those things. All in your body, man. It's, it's the inside that moves everything. Like internally, everything. That physicality. Oh, it's all internally, like everything you thinking, like, like you know what I mean. From when you talking, I gotta feel it. You know, it's all it's all a feeling that you get, and, I'm, and you and you develop it through consistency and over time. Like it's not something you if you just walking in and being an actor, it's not something you just gonna get. Like that's why I think back when I first started this thing, like I was, I feel, I'm like, wow, everything that I've learned now compared to when I first started, dude, I had to come a long way because it's so, as an actor, it's so much to learn and gain, man. You can't just walk into this thing and just expect to go out and just have a great performance. It's not going to happen like that because it lives in you eternally. Like, like it's everything inside of you. It's not outside of you. It's inside. Acting is from the inside, not the outside. It doesn't matter what you do here, waving and this and that. The camera picks up the emotions throughout through, from your soul. It comes through your soul. And projects in front of the camera so you got to have all that in you that's what i'm saying when you do the work you know i'm talking because i'm passionate about it you know what i mean i do it all i do this all the time like you you know like i work with i got an acting coach right and, and we've been right. working for two years to every tuesday and thursday we work consistently and somebody came up to me they said as many as many movies as you've been in you've been in so many different movies with so many big stars how come you still got an acting coach now to me I, 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 that's a great question. How come I said, because I understand the importance, the, the difference between being good and being great. It's only a matter of time before someone sees the work that I'm putting in. You know what I mean? They might not see it now, but as I continue to keep doing these, doing what I'm doing, somebody's going to see it. And they be like, gosh, he, he, he's good. He's good. You know, he's great. It always happens that way. It's, even with football, like this, this is to motivate people. It's not for me. It's for people to feel, be motivated, understand that look, life is a process to craft, Whatever you're doing is a process. Like, I'm very comfortable and very, very confident in my ability to be able to go out and work now. You know, at first I, you know, I had to gain that. First, I was like, kind of like, I, w I didn't have the confidence. But now I can just, I can just go and go because I've been doing it. I've been doing it for a while now. I know what it's like to be on set. I know what it's like to be prepared. Do you watch back? Do you watch back? Well, obviously, I'd imagine you watch your movies, but like, you know, do you watch and you're either critical, like, man, I should have delivered that differently or very proud, like, damn, I killed that. No, I just, I kind of, I kind of know, I kind of feel, I kind of go in it with like, you only get one shot, one shot to do this. If you miss your opportunity, you miss it. Like, I'm, com I'm comfortable with my choices that I make. And, you know, sometimes it's going to be good. Sometimes it's going to be great. But the coach that I had, his name's Kevin Benton from out of LA, he said, you can't have no good. You always have to be great. Every scene has to be the same. Every scene has to be done the same way you did the first, first, second, and third. The last one has to be the same like the first. You know what I mean? Meaning, you And all it takes is one, one off scene for, you know, that gets spread and it's like, hey, this person is off their game. Like, you have to be, I mean, I've always thought that about sports. I found it so interesting that you could win the Super Bowl. You could win, you know, MVP of the league, whatever. And if you don't produce again, it's almost like you never won those things. Maybe you have it on your resume, but people aren't saying two years later, oh, it's okay. We didn't make the playoffs because we won two years ago. It's like that expectation remains high. Yeah, you, you're absolutely right. Remains high. 
remains high. I say that as coming from Chicago and growing up, look, I'm always going to be grateful we got our six championships in the 90s, but it's been 20 plus years. <laughs> so I need a little bit more. Oh, yeah. um, so you're you're all about the arts, making music, acting, but I want to, you know, essentially wrap up this conversation talking about what's really crucial to front office sports, which is business. And you are a great guy to speak to about that. You got Jamba Juices, you're on Dancing with the Stars, hosting the challenge, you know, the the team in Australia, production companies, you uh, doing real estate. I think I saw, you know, you got this like townhouse community in the, in the DMV area, restaurants, Jack's Jocks, like, tell me your business philosophy and, you know, what you're hoping to accomplish there, same way that we talked yeah. about all the other things. So my biggest about. philosophy, my biggest biz, business philosophy is being able to work with wonderful people, great people, like-minded people, people who are just like me. And as far as my, as far as my integrity and my character, who I, what I stand for and who I am, that's what, that's what, uh, that's my approach. I want to know, um, and I ask questions. I want to know, I want to know, like, like what what are your plans plans as a company as a as a as a startup or what have you what are your plans for the future how do you plan to to shape this product or this service right do you when do you plan how long do you plan to keep it like when are you going to have an exit right how how i, I want to know the valuation where's the valuation i have I, I i tend to get into companies who have like uh have momentum like momentum i want to see like a 15 20 million dollar valuation you know, are there, are you giving friends and family discounts of 20%? Because if when you get that 20%, that helps, like that, that gives you, that gives you a better, a, places you in a better situation as far as your equity goes, right? When you have, when you have that discount. Yeah. So I want to, I want to know that. I want to know, I, there's, there's, there's a lot of different things, variables that go into like investing in a company when you, when you're looking at it. I mean, you, of course you're going to do your due diligence. I also want to know, is there somebody on, as far as the board of advisors, is this, who's on your board who had, who had exits, right? Cause, cause you are, you are like apples don't fall. To, I mean, you are who you associate yourself with. So you want, like I said, you want like-minded people. You want people who are brilliant, people who have, who have, who have had, exits and and who who can help add value you know you don't you don't want liabilities you want you want people who add value to your company and where you're trying to go what's an investment or a few that you're most proud of you get into this business game i mean i love your passion right you talk about acting and the things that you've done there that you know give you some sense of fulfillment what have you done in the business space where you're like, damn, I got in there at the right time. I made a great decision and I made some good money. Like, you know, what's, what are the ones that you would list off as just kind of the pinnacle of your business uh, history? Uh, I think the ones that I really love, I love Pathwater. Pathwater has been really, really, really amazing. I mean, the valuation has, has grown astronomically and I'm really proud of the success that, that we're having as a company. I mean, we have we have so many people, like well-known superstars and like c celebrities and you know entertainers, af af athletes who have came into this company because of well, because of the years. traction that we're getting and how we how we've you know we're evolving. So I'm really proud of them. I like I like them. I like Pescavore, Riff. Um, I like. Um, what else? Yeah, I mean, I, I, those are the ones that really pop in my pop into mind. They're they're all doing well, but those are the ones who are doing significantly well at the moment. And um, yeah, it's been it's been a journey. It's been been a great journey. What are you expecting out of this um, Australian National Basketball League and the investment with the Brisbane Bullets? Oh, I'm expecting to really um, make a difference within within the community, within the fan base. And, and of course, number one, win games. We're, we're expecting to win games. And I'm, I'm hoping that I can really provide, um, I can be a, a platform to really 
catalyze this team into winning games through my motivation, through my experience, through um, just advice, advising on certain in certain areas to to help catapult this team. Because you know, being in sports, being playing for a very long time, I've I've learned and I've seen so many different things, and I feel like I have. I have like uh, I have like discernment when it comes to to putting to creating a great atmosphere, a, a great environment to help to to win and, and be successful. You know, just through 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 being a teammate, through being a father, being a brother, you know, a, a uncle, you know, just all of the above. Uh, putting all those together, I could help contribute to to being successful. So I'll leave you with this. What do you think of the state of the league and the state of the kids coming in now, the young athletes, you know, the generation after you? I think you're the type of person who's showing people how much they can do after sport, that they can have interests during their time in whatever professional league and, you know, not be shy to pursue that with all the passion and aggressiveness in the world. Um, so you're leading by example, but when you look out and, you know, see these kids signing deals or the things that they're pursuing, making music, what have you, what's your impression? And, you know, what do you, how do you hope to see, uh, the role that athletes play evolve over the next, you know, several years? I'd like to see athletes continue to pursue the things that they're doing, pursue the things now that they want to do later. You know, because that's that's where I, I think we're getting better at that as far as creating our brand, identifying what it is that we want to do, the things that we believe in, the things that we're passionate about. And it, it's we're, we're definitely evolving in that manner. And I want to continue to see that. That's something that I lived by and I did. A lot of people see me acting. They see me doing doing music and all this stuff. But I was doing this while I was playing. I was into business. I bought, I purchased my first Jamba Juice location when I was, when I was in San Francisco. You know, I, I, I bought my first piece of real estate when I was in San Francisco. So I started laying the foundation of the things that I was going to roll into because I didn't want, I didn't want football to be my identity. You know, I wanted football to be a platform, not my identity. So I knew I had to set up these things and, and, really educate myself on what it is that I really want to do. All right. Well, it's awesome to see you doing your thing. It's inspiring. I appreciate you coming on here, telling your story and, you know, Vernon, I'm going to be, I'm going to be looking out for you, man. I'm going to be, you know, I want to, I want to see you take this acting thing far. I think the whole reason why I like to do this podcast is because I think coming up young people, Black people, men, women, honestly, everybody needs to understand that we don't have to just do one thing. You know what I mean? Just because I'm here at FOS and I'm a writer and editor, I got other stuff that I'm into. And all of that can contribute to who you are as a person and make you successful in each of those fields. And I think you're a great example. Thank you, Mr. Baker. I appreciate it. I'm going to put my sunshades on because I feel good about this conversation we just had. I feel like we're going to inspire. (laughs) <laughs> I feel like we're going to inspire a lot of people, man. So now I can ride off to the sunset. I can put my hand on the steering wheel and I can put it in reverse now. And I feel happy about this. <laughs> I know. I had to catch you on the go. You know I wanted you on the laptop. But honestly, you hop on the phone, got the kids in the back. That's a more authentic representation of where you're at. Hey, anyway, man, that's what I'm so saying. That's it. what I'm saying. That's how we do it, baby. That's how we do it. That's a wrap on another episode of the My Other Passion podcast. Shout out to big homie Vernon Davis for coming through, dropping some gems on us about everything from what it's like to play in the NFL, win the Super Bowl, to finding your purpose in life after you leave the league. I love how hard that guy is going with investments, with acting. We certainly have not heard the last of Vernon Davis. I'm looking forward to what he has on the horizon. I'm also looking forward to what we have coming at My Other Passion. My boy, Daniel Myrick, cutting up some heat with the episodes. Shout out to him. Shout out to all our future guests, our listeners. Go ahead and leave a review if you're feeling it. That Apple podcast page is looking lovely, but it could certainly look a lot better. Thank you for listening. I'll see you soon.